We now turn to a different subject. Avogadro's number. What in the world is a mole? Well, we chemists often use this thing called a mole to measure stuff. Now what is a mole? Well, strictly to find a mole, also called Avogadro's number, which also happens to be the name of a band I once saw on iTunes, is 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. It's kind of like a dozen, except instead of being 12, it's 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd, which, by the way, is a huge number. So why in the world would we chemists even care about such a bizarre number? Well, oddly enough, as it turns out, a mole happens to be the exact number of atoms present in a sample that weighs that element's atomic weight. Okay, let me do an example. I want you to look at your periodic table. What is carbon's atomic weight? Well, it's 12.011, of course. So what that means is that if you had 12.011 grams of carbon in your hand, you would be holding 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd carbon atoms. All right, let's do another. The atomic weight of magnesium is 24.305. Now, this means that if you had 24.305 grams of magnesium in your hand, you would be holding 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd magnesium atoms. Okay, okay, let's do one more. <laughs> let's look at xenon. Its atomic weight is 131.29. So, if you had 131.29 grams of xenon in your hand, you would have, <laughs> you guessed it, 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd xenon atoms in your hand. I hope that makes sense. If so, let's go on. To a great lecture problem. What is the mass in grams of a mole of carbon-12? Now, I have to answer this question by first explaining. You remember me talking in the previous slide about how carbon's atomic weight is 12.011 grams. Well, keep in mind, as we talked about in our previous chapter, that that number that you see on the periodic table is a weighted average that takes into account all three isotopes of carbon. Carbon-12, carbon-13, and carbon-14, and calculates a weighted average of all carbon atoms in the universe of weighing about 12.011. Here's something tricky, though. This particular question is not asking you about carbon in general. If it asks the question about carbon in general, then it's talking about carbon 12s, 13s, and 14s in their relative percentages that they're found in the universe. This is talking about specifically carbon 12 atoms. So in other words, if you had one mole of only carbon 12s, no 13s, no 14s, what would its mass in grams be? You guessed it. It would be exactly 12. I hope that distinction makes sense. Here's another lecture problem. How many atoms are present in a mole of carbon-12? <laughs> I hope you guessed it. 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. Does that make sense? Cool. Now what about molecules like NaCl? Do they have atomic weights? The answer is technically no. When we talk about the weight of a molecule, which is something that's made up of two or more atoms that are bonded together, we're no longer talking about an atomic weight. We're now talking about a molecular weight. It's mainly just a vocabulary difference. Atomic weight refers to the weights of individual atoms, and molecular weights refer to the weights of molecules. Molecular weights are also sometimes called formula weights or molar masses. So what in the world is the molecular weight of sodium chloride? We can determine this by looking at the periodic table. So as we look at a simple periodic table, you will note that sodium's atomic weight is 22.990. You'll also note that chlorine's atomic weight is 35.453. So what in the world is the molecular weight of sodium chloride? Well, each molecule of sodium chloride is comprised of one sodium and one chlorine combined. So the molecular weight of sodium chloride is going to be 22.99 plus 35.453, which equals 58.443 grams. Which brings us to some great lecture problems. Determine the formula weights of each of the following compounds. Magnesium hydroxide, the active ingredient in milk of magnesia. Anisopentyl acetate, responsible for the smell of bananas. 
I'm going to show you how to do these on the dot cam. To do this first one, we look at the periodic table and determine what the atomic masses are for each of these elements. Magnesium has an atomic mass of 24.31. Oxygen has an atomic mass of 16. And hydrogen has an atomic mass of 1. Next, we determine how many total atoms there are. You'll notice that there's an OH here, but it's wrapped in brackets and has a 2 next to it. What that really means is that each molecule of this magnesium hydroxide has two total OHs in it. So there are actually two oxygen atoms and two hydrogen atoms total in each molecule of this compound. There's only one magnesium now. So what I've got is I've got one magnesium with an atomic mass of 24.31 plus two atoms of uh, oxygen that each weigh 16 plus two atoms of hydrogen that each weigh one. I'll let you do that on your calculator. One thing I want to stress, however, is that the units for molecular weight are in grams per mole. Please, please, please remember that, grams per mole. That will become very important later on. Doing this problem could be challenging if we leave the formula out, out, out here all separated, where I've got all the car these carbons all separated, the oxygens and hydrogens. I'm going to condense them all together so that I can see it a little bit more clearly. How many total carbons are there? I've got one here, another there, and five there. So that's one plus one plus five is seven. How many hydrogens? Well, I've got three here and 11 over here. So that combined is 14. And I've got two total oxygens. So the condensed formula for this is C7H14O2. Now let's determine what the atomic masses are for each of these elements. If you look at the periodic table, the atomic mass for carbon is 12.01. For hydrogen is about 1. And for oxygen is about 16. Now I've got 7 carbon atoms. And I've got 14 hydrogens. And I've got 2 oxygens. So if I take this, multiply it by 7, that gives me 84.07. If I take 1 times 14, that gives me 14. And if I take 16 times 2, it gives me 32. If I add these together, I'll get the final molecular weight for this compound. Once again, as with the last one, please don't forget that the units here are in grams per mole.